Hi everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome back for another Artist Spotlight video. I'm so excited to share with you today Leslie of Alchemy Clay Studio. She has an Instagram as well as an Etsy shop where she shares her, her handmade polymer clay earrings. It looks like she does a lot of work with canes and that's actually what she's going to be sharing with you today. A super simple but really beautiful pumpkin cane technique. She breaks it down, makes it so simple and easy. I'm so excited to give it a try myself. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below and let us know if you're going to try this out. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. And without further ado, here's Leslie. Hi, everybody. My name is Leslie. I'm the owner of Alchemy Clay Studio. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a pumpkin pattern earring using a simple pumpkin cane. Um, I have... Um, all my clay here is already preconditioned and this clay is all Fimo soft. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to take my, my orange pumpkin color and I've already kind of shaped it into just a general like log pumpkin shape. And now I'm just going to be making some cuts to add my detailing in. So what I like about the Fimo clay is that it cuts really nicely and it doesn't kind of squish down. Um, I do make canes sometimes with uh, Primo and I find you have to let it rest a lot more in between steps because it kind of will squish, squish around more and you'll lose some of that nice detail. So I made my cuts and I'm going to just add this thin brown um, in between. Okay, so now I have these pieces of brown. I'm just going to kind of reshape it a little bit. And I kind of want to make sure they're nice and curved. So I'm just going to kind of press it in a bit to get that nice curved line. It also just helps keep all the pieces um, adhered to each other as well. Okay, so next um, we have the stem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little indentation on the top um, for the stem. That way it just looks a little bit more coherent. Um, you don't have to do that. It's just kind of a preference. Um, and now I'm going to just kind of cut this down to the rough shape and size that I want. And I'll just kind of keep playing with it until it's how I like it. Got to flatten the bottom a bit just to give it some dimension. And I'm going to kind of make my stem curl a little bit just to add a little bit of character to it. Okay, so that was kind of the easy part. Um, this next step is honestly, um, in my opinion, the hardest and most important. Um, and it's adding the background color. So it's really important to add the background color um, in nicely um that way when you go to reduce it it doesn't smush down in a weird way so 
So I try and just get an idea of what shape I need and then I kind of just work it into the right, right shape. Okay, so now I have it kind of filled in um, to a circle. Um, I like to do is I like to wrap the whole thing in a thin layer um, just to kind of keep it all cohesive on the outside. So I'm going to roll this out nice and thin um, and then I'll be back to wrap it. Okay, so I rolled this strip out to um, a four on my pasta machine and now I'm just going to give it a nice wrap. Okay so there is there is the cane that we are going to start with. Um, so now I would normally let this kind of sit for maybe an hour, hour or overnight, depending on how I'm feeling, um, just to give it time to kind of cool down from me touching it. Um, it doesn't smush as much when you reduce it then, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and start reducing it. So I'll start just by squeezing it gently in the middle and I'll work my way out to the side to get any air bubbles out. Do that on both sides and then I'll give it a little roll and then I'll just keep doing that back and forth. And as it gets longer I might gently stretch it and then just keep rolling it out. And you can see because I started working it with right away, the ends got pretty mushed in, but that's okay. They'll just get cut off. Okay, and then once I have it rolled down to a decently small size, I just start cutting the ends until I get a clean cut. So you can see that is still kind of smushed. Getting a little bit cleaner, a little bit cleaner. And there you go, that's pretty good. So that is, um, I know I cut off all of the, the smushed end to get a clear picture. I'm gonna do that, go ahead and do that on the other end as well. So you can see that's not quite it. There you go, that's pretty good. Just making sure it's nice and even, a nice and even log. Okay, now I'm going to start um, cutting these up into smaller, um, smaller logs to put together a, a pattern. So I'm going to do... I think I will do um, 
I normally do between an inch and an inch and a half when I am putting my seam together. It's just my preference. I think I'm going to do an inch and a half. And there we go. I got a nice repeating pumpkin pattern. So I'm going to take my background color. I'm going to fill in the spaces. I'm just going to even go a little Instead of just putting the log in there, I'm going to kind of just pinch it off into a little diamond shape because that's kind of what you get when you put that together. The thing you have to watch out for when you rolled them, you can see it kind of twisted. So just twist them back so it's straight throughout the whole cane. So you can see now the green stem goes straight through. So I'm going to do that to each of them. That one was pretty good already. Okay. So now I have this pattern. I'm going to smush this into more of a rectangle. So you can see that my filling in my spaces protected it from getting too distorted. I'm going to just reduce this down just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut this in half and add these two together and reduce this down. I might do that one more time because I want them decently small because if I'm putting them on earrings I want to be able to have a repeating pattern that you see on the earring. If you leave it too big then you just get a bunch of like half pumpkins cut out on your earrings. Okay so I think I'm gonna call that good for reducing. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off just enough to clean up each of the ends. So there's my pattern, which I actually quite like. And then I'm going to start slicing. So when I slice, I'm trying to make as consistent and even slices as I can. Okay, so now I start piecing them together. And this is where being consistent on your slice really helps because if you make a consistent thickness on your slice they just will sit really nicely I just gently push the corners until they fill in that little hole you don't want to be too rough because otherwise your image will get really wonky right there and then I'll just give it a gentle roll. I don't use a lot of pressure when I'm doing this part. Okay, and then the next thing I do to get these seams nicer is I'll take a piece of computer paper. And I just have this flat 
that piece of plastic board and I just gently rub over in all the directions. You can also do it with your roller. Just instead of rolling, you're just rubbing. Then I will lift it up and I will do that on the other side as well. Sometimes I'll do this a couple times until I'm satisfied that those seams are well adhered to each other. Okay, so now I have a cohesive pattern. I'm going to go run this through my pasta machine to get it to the setting I like to uh, the thickness I like for earrings. Um, I like um, to do my earrings on, on um, setting number two of my atlas. Um, it's just a personal preference. So what I do is um, I cut it to you know a consistent thickness, but it's kind of hard to gauge exactly how thick. So what I do is I'll go through my pasta machine one direction on setting zero, and then I'll do it the other direction. That way, hopefully my images stretch the same both directions. So I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've rolled it through my pasta machine. You can see that I, because I did it both directions, um, my pumpkins are still pretty, um, they're not all distorted horizontally or vertically, they're still pretty proportional. Um, so now it's time to do, pick out what cutters you want and cut out your earrings. Um, that's totally based off what you like, so I'm going to leave that part up to you guys um, and I will show you what my final earrings look like. So just a close-up of the pattern once more. Yeah I'm pretty happy with how those turns out, these guys turned out. Um, so anyways I will be back with my final products once I have these cut out and baked and all finished. Okay guys I'm back with my finished earrings um so i'm gonna just zoom in so you can see them a little better so this is these are the finished products that i have assembled i hope you liked this tutorial and thank you for watching